So Lara is a senior entomologist with the Department of Agriculture and Fisheries, also based at the Ecosciences Precinct in Brisbane. And Lara is talking to us today about aphids in lettuce. Over to you. Thanks, Lara. Thanks, Heidi. So I'm going to talk more generally about aphids and aphid transmitted viruses in lettuce. So there's three species of aphid that most commonly cause problems in lettuce. The main one is green peach aphid. And this has got a very wide host range and it can transmit over 100 different plant viruses. And it's quite variable in appearance. There's also sour thistle aphid, which Paul's talked about. And um, it doesn't breed in lettuce, as Paul mentioned, but it transmits the lettuce and crotted yellow, so it enters the crop to feed. And then the third one is lettuce aphid, which is also a significant lettuce pest in some regions. So in Australia, aphids mainly reproduce asexually, which means the offspring they produce are genetically identical to the parent. They produce live young and the life cycle is very short. Um, it can be as little as five to ten days under ideal conditions. So this, of course, means that populations can build up very quickly and also that they, that they can quickly develop insecticide resistance. Populations consist of winged and wingless adults and nymphs, the immature stage. And as Paul said, the winged adults are produced when populations are large and aphids are overcrow overcrowded. And they can move on wind currents over quite long distances and they're very effective, uh, very efficient at locating new host plants. And the wingless adults can also walk between plants, so they're also quite mobile. And this makes them good virus vectors. Aphid populations often build up on non-crop hosts, including weeds and old crops which haven't been ploughed in, and they may migrate into the newly planted crops. So they tend to migrate in from the field margins, so you often find them on the crop edges first. So there's two types of virus spread by aphids, and they're categorised according to the way they're picked up by the insects vector and spread. So we've all, all, already heard about um, a type of persistent virus, lettuce necrotic yellow, and uh, persistent viruses are picked up by the aphid while it's feeding. So they have to be ingested and they circulate to the salivary glands before they can be spread. So it means they take a long time for the aphid to pick up the virus and transmit it to a new plant. And it also means that the virus stays in the aphid for many weeks or um, often until it dies. So this means it can be spread over quite long distances. So in comparison, non-persistent viruses are picked up when the aphid probes the plant. It doesn't actually need to feed. And the virus is picked up on the mouth parts. So this means transmission can be very quick. It can be just um, about 30 seconds. And it also means the virus isn't retained in the insect, so that it easily loses the virus when it probes again. And this means it tends, these types of virus tend to only be spread locally. But one of the most important consequences of all of this is that while insecticides may be effective against persistent viruses, they're generally not effective against non-persistent viruses. And they can actually um, make it worse and increase the spread of the virus by agitating the aphid, so it moves around and probes more. So insecticides are often the main methods used to, to control aphids, but they do have some drawbacks. Um, so as I mentioned, they can agitate the aphids, they make them mobile, and they spread the virus further and more rapidly. Some species, and in particular green peach aphid, have widespread resistance to many of the commonly used insecticides. And of course, insecticides can kill beneficials and flare aphids and other pests. And as we've heard already, South Thistle aphid doesn't breed in lettuce, so spraying the crop won't control this species. So the efficacy of insecticides depends very much on the species of aphid, the type of virus, and the mode of action of the insecticide. 
So where possible, choose products that are less harmful to beneficials. And I'll say a little bit more about this in a couple of slides. But even broad spectrum pesticides are less harmful to beneficials if you can spot spray or border spray to treat a small area. And that way you can conserve populations of beneficials in the crop in the unsprayed areas. So they're ready to move back in again. And then obviously as for all insecticide use, it's important to minimize resistance development by rotating between insecticide groups. Uh, so some products, particularly some of the newer products, work by stopping the aphids from feeding. And the manufacturers claim this can help to reduce virus spread. And there is some quite good evidence this is true for stopping spread of persistent viruses, but um, probably not the non-persistent viruses, just because they're spread so quickly. So we're currently setting up some trials in Gatton and in Bundaberg to assess the efficacy of some of these insecticides. There's a range of naturally occurring predators, parasitoids, and fungal diseases that can help to suppress pest populations. And these um, on the screen here are some of the most effective natural enemies for aphids. So there's a couple of different um, parasitoid species, and there's a photo here of an adult parasitoid wasp and a mummified or parasitized aphid. <coughs> um, ladybird larvae and adults are really very effective aphid predators and so are lace wings and hoverfly larvae. Uh, we also did some sampling of sand thistle aphid from the Lockheed Valley to look for natural enemies of this species, and we found a couple of different species of parasitoid, parasitoid wasps parasitizing this species of aphid, and we also found this predator associated with it, and this is called an aphid fly, and the larvae are predators of aphids and other similar insect pests. So if you have a good population of beneficials, they can be extremely effective in managing aphids. And if you suppress aphid populations, it helps to suppress the virus threat. So I talked about choosing soft option insecticides. Um, I was recently involved in a project led by IPM Technologies in which we looked at the effects of pesticides on beneficial insects. So we carried out um, laboratory bioassay to screen a whole load of different insecticides against key beneficial species in vegetable crops. So this project finished last year and the results have been summarised in a number of fact sheets. And these allow you to easily compare the effects of different pesticide products on key beneficials in different vegetable crops. And there's fact sheets for, different, for seven different vegetable crop types. And this is just a small part of the fact sheet for lettuce. And I've picked out these four products, uh, which are all registered in letters for control of aphids. And the letters um, indicate different beneficials that are important in letters. And hopefully you can see there um, how harmful each product is to the different beneficials. So you can see, for instance, that imidacloprid or Comfidor um, was harmful to all of the species we tested, whereas, for example, Pymetrazine or Chess was harmless to everything apart from ladybirds, um, where it was slightly harmful. So these fact sheets are all available on the Osveg and Hort Innovation websites. Um, you're welcome to contact me for a copy, and I'm sure IPM Technologies would have copies also. And just um, finally, to talk about some other control methods, uh, controlling weeds and other non-crop posts and destroying old crops is really important because these act as the reservoir both of the aphids and the virus. It's important to monitor regularly and know when the aphid populations are likely to be high. So this is generally mild conditions in autumn and spring, particularly following good rainfall. And for most species, the ideal temperature is about 20 to 25 degrees. And there's been a lot of other research which has shown you can protect the crop by planting barrier crops, so something like maize or sorghum, for instance. So these deter aphids from entering the crop, but they also act as a sink to prevent non persistent viruses um, because the viruses will land on these um, barrier crops first and lose the virus while probing um, the plants. So even if the aphids then go on to enter your lettuce crop, they won't be carrying the virus. 
Reflective mulches have been shown to deter aphids from landing, particularly um, early in the crop, and they, they become a bit less effective as the crop canopy closes over. And there's been a lot of research lately on encouraging beneficials by planting nectar producing plants in non crop areas. And the research has shown these could be very successful at increasing beneficial numbers quite some distance into the crop. So I just wanted to acknowledge that um, this work was done as part of the Hort Innovation Project, Area Wide Management of Vegetable Diseases, led by Cherie, and um, the Hort Innovation Project, Impact of Pesticides on Beneficials, led by Jessica Page at IPM Technologies. So thank you very much.